Hi everyone, Thomas Desmond here, and today I want to talk about edge functions in Vercel. Alongside the release of Next.js 12, Vercel, the creators of Next.js, released edge functions in beta. These edge functions let us run code when a request comes in so that we can modify the response that we send back. There's a lot of cool things that we can do with these edge functions. So today I want to show you how you can use edge functions in Next.js and some of the cool things that are possible with them. So let's jump in. Okay, so what is an edge function? These edge functions enhance our static sites. We can now run code whenever a request comes in and modify the response that we send back based on certain criteria. So these edge functions allow us to move server-side logic to the edge. These edge functions run in Vercel's edge network, so we're not sacrificing speed. These are running on a CDN close to your users. Vercel knows that performance is key with static site generation. So these edge functions are globally distributed, have zero cold start time, and are ready to execute with every single request. With these edge functions, we can now do personalization at the speed of static on the edge. So let's take a look at how we can do this. I'm in VS Code now with a brand new Next.js application. I haven't made any changes to this. I just used create next app to create a new next application using TypeScript. And let's create our first middleware function. It's actually pretty easy. We just need to create one file named underscore middleware. So I'm going to go to my pages directory and create that new file. So inside of this file is where we're going to write our middleware functions. This is what's going to run and get executed with each request that comes in. So this is a very basic middleware function. All it does is return back the response, hello world for every single request. Any request that comes in to view our app is going to get the response, hello world. So let's check this out in our browser. I'm currently already running my dev environment. So let's look at it in the browser. All right, so localhost 3000, we're getting back that hello world. And I can try and visit other pages. Again, hello world, new page number five, more hello world. So no matter what request I put in, I'm gonna get back hello world as my response. And that's because we have this middleware function. You'll notice in my pages directory, I don't have anything called new page. I just have an index, but because this middleware is returning back the response, hello world, it's going to return that back for every single request because we haven't limited it to anything. We can look at the URL and change the responses based on what the URL is. And we'll look into that a little bit later, but first off, I want to look into this middleware function and define it a little bit more. You'll look at the arguments here. These are the two standard arguments that you're going to get for a middleware function. You have your next request and your next fetch event. Next request contains all the information about the request, such as the URL that they're trying to visit, cookie information, geolocation information, and IP information. That's all accessible to us that we can use to base our responses on. And the next fetch event is what we usually would use if we wanna do any sort of logging. We can now track the event and wait until it's totally done and do logging in between. So let's take a look at some other examples of using middleware functions because changing the entire HTML for the page to hello world probably isn't what we want to do inside of a real application. Things that we'd want to do are maybe check the user's location and reroute them to a specific URL based on that location or do some logging along the way. And one thing I want to show quickly as well is just how the application looks if we do nothing. So you're allowed to just return back from this and it's going to return back whatever the response is that you'd expect from your page. So I'm going to change this into just a return and we can go back to our browser. And if we refresh here, we'll see that new page five now returns that 404 like we'd expect because we don't actually have that page created. If I go to simply localhost 3000, it'll load my index page, which this is the index that you get when you do a create next app. So let's look at a few more real world examples that we might do inside of a middleware function. And first off, we can check the URL. 
the URL is something that we might want to use to determine what to do. If users are visiting a certain URL, maybe we'll do certain logging or redirect them accordingly. And we have access to the URL that the user is requesting inside of our request event. So now we have this if statement. If the URL that the user is trying to visit is user slash login, we can do certain events. So let's actually look at our next fetch event. And the big thing that you can do on top of that is use the wait until method. The wait until method allows us to prolong the execution of our middleware while still already sending a response back to our users. So we can make the middleware function run a little bit longer but have already sent the response back to our users. And this is great for logging or triggering events where we don't need to wait for the response to finish. So inside of here, we can add a wait until on top of our event and do certain actions based on that. So this is a very simple wait until function. We can add logic inside of here that we want to run after we've already sent the response back to the user. So if we need to do any sort of background tasks, such as logging or triggering an event, that would be great to do inside of here. So what happens now is if we were to visit user slash login, this wait until function would execute and we could do any sort of logic inside of there. And that's really the main purpose of the next fetch event, being able to prolong your middleware functions to do some sort of background activity while you're then already sending the response back to your users. Where I think a lot of the power comes from is from the next request and the next response that we'll look at now. And we've already used the next request to look at the URL that the user is trying to visit. But something I think is really powerful is being able to look at the geolocation data of that user as well. Now we can modify this to look at the country code and be able to determine and use different logic based on what country people are coming from. So now inside of this if block, only if the users from the US will it run into here. Maybe you want to block all users that are coming from the US. So inside of here, we can send back a response that is blocking for the US. So we can turn a new response with that status code of 451 for anyone coming from the US. We could check whatever country they're coming from and send them back certain data. But where this becomes really powerful, I think, is with the next response object. The next response object allows us to rewrite or redirect URLs. So now, if the user's in a certain country, we can rewrite the URL to send them to static content that we've already generated, but that is based on their location. So if we wanted to, we can return a next response, and we are going to rewrite the URL, sending them to slash US. So with this code, if someone comes in from the US, we're going to redirect them to the US version of the page. And this becomes very powerful because we can statically generate ahead of time our US page. So it's nearly instantaneous when the user makes a request, this middleware function is going to execute and we can rewrite the URL to send them to the US address and get that personalized content to them. A rewrite or a redirect are possible. With a rewrite, the URL and the address bar doesn't change. With a redirect, the address bar will change and they'll see that they are moving to a different page. So rewriting the URL to the statically generated pages is a perfect way to be able to modify and add personalization to your site. So this is where I see a lot of power with these new edge functions by Vercel. Being able to check the user's geolocation and rewriting the URL to send them to personalized content based on their location. You can do the country, region, all the way down to the city. Another thing that might be useful inside of the request is checking the cookie data. So we have access to the cookies that are coming along with the request. So let's say we wanted to check if someone was a returning user. If we have the returning user, now 
If someone's a returning user, we can redirect them or rewrite them to certain content. Maybe we have a statically generated page that we want to send all of our returning users to, and this is how we can do that now. These edge functions are happening at the edge, allowing us to modify the response based on the request. So getting started with edge functions in Next.js is really easy. It really is just adding that one underscore middleware file inside of your application. And now you can add functionality in there that's going to run whenever a request comes in. I see this being very powerful with static sites because it keeps your static sites fast, but now you can do personalization at the edge. Vercel has done a lot of work to show different examples of how people can use these edge functions but they have a range of examples here to show you how you can unlock the potential of these edge functions and get the most out of them. So you can come here, maybe get some ideas, get some inspiration on how you can use edge functions inside of your applications. So come here, see all the examples and see how you can bring it into your own applications with Vercel.